there everybody, Billabo10000 here, bringing you another episode of 999, the nonary games. And today, we have just escaped from the Escape the Room and the Funyarinpa, and now, we're stepping through the door to find ourselves in a wide hallway. Let's continue the story. Huh, another hallway. Yeah, another hallway, Junpei. Junpei, June, Lotus, and Santa stopped for a moment and looked at their surroundings. Those are some big ba uh, bars. A short distance away, a metal grate extended across the width of the hallway. Come on, open! I don't see those opening anytime soon. It's not going to open because you rattled it, you know. Yeah. Damn it! Lotus has a point. They took hold and shook, but it refused to move. Look over here! Okay. Nearby was a pair of elevators. Elevators. And the buttons? Well... Of course they don't work. <laughs> Why would they work? Let's be real here. The power must be out here too, just like by the staircase. That leaves this door. Okay, so we're going into another room. That's interesting. Well, looks like we don't have any choice. <laughs> well, that's the whole situation, isn't it? You don't have a choice but to do any of it. Yeah. Sure does. Here we go. Well then, let's open it. I wonder if this is another escape the room segment, because that's very quickly after right. the last one. Here I go. Junpei grabbed hold of the knob and quietly pushed the door open. Well, he entered slowly, trying to take in as much of the surroundings as he could. The others followed shortly. Oh, so it's a kitchen. Kitchen, lovely. Santa did not look pleased. <laughs> He's what never pleased. Expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit. I was hoping this would be the way out of here. Except the way out has the number nine on the door. So that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? Yeah, yeah, I know. Still. As they talked, Lotus headed deeper into the room. Oh, until at last she stood in front of a door. If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Well, that's important, and that's good to know, but also that means we're probably going to face a goddamn gameplay segment very quickly after the last one. Hmm. But don't we need a key for that? No good. I guess that wasn't very constructive. Neither Junpei nor Lotus looked terribly happy. Here we go. Here we go. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Well, there's the map. Uh, we dug the ship map from his pocket and spread it out in front of him. As he did... Hey! Whereabouts are we? What's that? Hmm? Huh? Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I found this a little while ago. Well... It's a map of the B-deck. Before Junpei could finish, Lotus snatched the map away from him. Let me see that. Oh, well, th okay. Thank you, please, you know. She ran her finger across it, muttering to herself. Knew it. See? Look. Okay, so she's going to point out where we are. That's helpful. Yes, yes, hold your horses. Junpei did as he was told. What did you figure out? Santa and June moved forward over to look at the map as well. This is handy. Hmm. We're about see, to we. we came in here. Now, if we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. I'm trying to figure out where we are on this. I th I think I see where we are now. Yeah, I think I see where we are. Yep, yep, How that's the kitchen. That? She's right. We can get out through there. All right, there brilliant. Can. Here, you can have it back. All right, good to know. I like how the map actually has the grates on the, the map, though. <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, satisfied that she had been correct, Lotus folded the map and handed it back to Junpei. Thanks. He took it and slid the valuable piece of paper back into his pocket. There's a card reader on the right side of the door. Which means we need a card to open the door. And that means the key card is somewhere in here, right? All right. That seems the most likely. Brilliant. All right, we know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. Okay. Here we go. Escape the room, here we go. Let's do this. Seek a way out? Let's do this. Come on. Alright, so this is the kitchen. Uh, pretty standard so far. Alright, let's take a look. A voucher. It says, appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F. Okay, that's probably important. Those nine plates look pretty expensive. They're plates for appetizers. Remember, appetizers usually come on square plates. Okay, okay, well... <laughs> 
Well, excuse me, princess. That's that's a line and a half. The translation team in this game have done really well here. Was that in the original? I don't remember. One, two, three. There's ten of them. If you flip these over, they look like hats. The middle is super deep for a plate. Probably a soup plate. Yep. They're made that way so that the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. What makes you think a poor college student has the money to do something like that? <laughs> I think there are 15 of these plates. I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the hell can you tell that? They look just like any other plate from the 99 cents store. If you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. I feel sorry for June. Oh, Lotus is getting right into the, the personal business there. Oh, why the hell are you bringing up June? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. You are not terribly subtle. <laughs> Jesus. There's a bunch of little wavy ridges on this plate. Those plates are for serving meat. Ugh, you really are ignorant. Wow. She is being very, very rude. It's not like I need to know this crap, of course. Most people just like using a plate for plates. And there's a voucher at the end of the counter. Let me read it again. This voucher doesn't match the number of plates on the table. It says appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F on the voucher. And the plates on the table are 9 appetizer, 16 meat, 10 soup, 15 seafood. Maybe they're using hexadecimal here? What? Hexadecimal is... A number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10... Oh. That's odd. You're familiar with base 10, right? That's the normal system of numbers, 1 to 10. Uh, the base equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15, and 10 equals 16. The 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know it sounds strange, but you can think of it as just six letters added on the normal number system after nine. A, 10, B, 11, yeah. I think I get it. Okay, so... Hexadecimal. I wonder if it's some kind of hint. Maybe. Junpei, do you remember what I told you about hexadecimal code earlier? Yeah, of course I do. Alright then, here's a little quiz for you. What would 9 plus F be in base 10? Well, if F was 15, it'd be 9 plus 15, which would be 24. That's right. Good job, you're a fast learner. Alright, do we need to look at this voucher? Oh no, this is just us learning hexadecimal again. Okay. 8, not yet. That's how you count in hexadecimal. Nine plates for appetizers. Nine is nine, even in hexadecimal and decimal. Ten soup plates. Ten is A in hexadecimal. Fifteen of these seafood plates, it's F on the voucher. And then sixteen plates. Sixteen is written as ten in hexadecimal. This is nuts. Okay, let's leave this alone for now. Let's see if we can find something else. Wow, this pot looks like it's made out of silver. I bet drinking tea from this pot would be really yummy. Spending a day off of June drinking tea? <laughs> Could such a day ever happen for me? Well, if you live in Britain... <laughs> Jumpy? Oh, nothing. We don't really need hot water, so we should be moving on. Alright. It's a lot of notes. They've got a bunch of stuff written on them, but it doesn't look like a code or anything like that. Okay. We can go into the pantry. Uh, is there anything here? There's so much stuff in here. A whole load of cans. This is probably a pantry. Okay, is there anything in the pantry that we need to look at? Maybe the cheese? Aha, there's a bottle behind this one. Hey, there's something behind the cheese. You're right. Why don't we move some of the cheese? All right, guys, time to move it. June and I need to look behind you. There's a little green bottle back there. Okay, let's collect the green bottle then. Bottle of oil. Okay. Oh, look, cooking oil. You could probably use this to make something slippery. Okay, so use it as um, lubrication to open a door or something. Potentially. Okay. There's this down here. Could this be something to do with the hexadecimal? I'm not sure. An iron oven looks pretty heavy duty. It's probably industrial quality. I bet you could cook anything with this. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Can't open it. Oh, I knew it. It's locked. Uh, of course it's locked. We're gonna have to find the password somewhere. There's a pot on top of the stove. If there are some ingredients around here, I could cook something up for us. Lotus, you can actually cook. Who the hell do you think I am? You better believe I know how to boil hot water and put in my instant noodles. Oh my god. And, and I can boil eggs too. I hope she's joking. Oh my god. There are some bottles of seasoning in here. Oh god. All we've got here is a pot and a frying pan. 
Oh, and a pressure cooker. Well, I guess we could use some of those as weapons. What kind of an idiot are you? You're gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so serious? Why so serious? This is the door we came in through. It's not locked, so we could go back out, but what's the point, right? All that's out there is an iron gate in a dead-end hallway. Yep. Might as well be locked for all the good going back out there would do. Alright, let's take a look at this door. Damn, it didn't work. It doesn't matter how many times you try it. This door isn't going to open until we've solved all the puzzles in this room. I'm sure this is all just part of Zero's plan. I just can't imagine what his motives could be. Or a she. Could be a she. It's a card reader. Since the light's red, I figure it's probably still locked. The key card for it's got to be around here somewhere. We just got to find it. All right, let's see. Have I missing anything? Aha. Well, a trash can. There's nothing inside of it. Well, better than being full of rotten food, I suppose. Fair enough. Damn it, there's nothing in here. Hey Santa, digging through the trash really suits you. What the hell did you say? Listen lady, I did you a favor. I knew you just piss and moan, so I did it for you. Oh my. I don't recall asking you to do anything. Oh my. I gotta throttle you. Ooh. Excuse me. Oh, look at those two. Does it feel colder in here? Oh, they're lovely. It's a partition that splits the room. Nothing suspicious about that. Maybe this table is preparing food. There are plates everywhere. What kind of plates are they? Uh, I guess we're not looking at them. Um, where can we go from here? This way goes back there. This way goes this way. Uh, it's a tank with a pipe coming out of it. Nothing really special about it. A countertop. We've got a rolling pin and a colander. Nothing useful in other words. I mean, rolling pins could be somewhat useful. You never know. Let's check this door. This door... This bolt is rusted in place. It won't budge. Of course. Maybe if I put some oil on it. Hey, just a little bit of oil and... Come on. Come on, you little son of a bitch. Whoa. Yes, got you, you little boss. Jesus Christ. You did it, Jumpy. You're so smart. Yay. Oh, it's the freezer. As Junpei walked into the room, a blast of cold air washed over him. Almost instinctively, he folded his arms tight across his chest, doing what he could to conserve body heat. Oh, it's cold in here. It really is. What is this place? Hmm. Are you blind? It's a freezer. It's a freezer. Santa's teeth had already begun to chatter. Hardly surprising. The freezer was far too cold for someone dressed as he was. Lotus, however, was even an even... Lotus, however, was in an even worse situation. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. Yeah, she's like wearing nothing. She needs to get out of the freezer. Solid in seconds. Yep. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. All right. And with that, she ran out of the room. As Lotus left, June came in. Oh, whoa. It's really cold in here. White puffs of steam hovered in front of their faces as they talked. June had already started to shiver. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. No, I'm fine. No, no, you had a fever. Please go back outside. My fever's gone now. All right. But... Junpei had scarcely opened his mouth. Huh? Oh, fuck. When the thunderous sound of metal upon metal rang out from behind them? In unison, they spun around to find that the door they had only recently come through... Oh, fuck. There's a burst pipe. Oh, no. <sighs> Junpei rushed to the no. door. Why did it suddenly close? Oh, Lotus didn't do that, did she? Desperately, he grabbed hold of the doorknob. Ah. It's frozen shut. Cold beyond cold. Merely touching it was painful. The knob's frozen. But why? Oh, crap. They quickly deduced the pipe next to the door had ruptured. It's like the pipe next to it broke and... Water released by the rupture hit the door and froze instantly. Santa shoved Junpei aside and pounded against the door. Ah, oh, crap. Hey, Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! Crap. Lotus! She wasted no time in responding. What do you want? What's going on? We're locked in, yet. You... The door won't Ugh. open! Try opening it from that side, please! Oh, fine. If you say so, Come hold on. on. It's not gonna open. Soon they could hear Lotus on the other side of the door. She can't open it either. Then the grunting ceased and they could hear light panting as if from exertion. 
It's no use. It won't budge. Fuck. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. That's fair enough, to be honest. <laughs> oh. Uh, God damn it. Oh, he's pretty bad as well. He's got like nothing. He's not got a jacket on. Oh, shaking like a newborn deer. June was hugging herself and was shivering violently. Even Junpei with the heaviest clothes of any of them was clearly feeling the cold. With every breath they took, they could feel the cold working its way deeper and deeper into their bodies. Anyway, uh, let, let, let's find a way out. Yep. If we don't get moving, we're, we're going to be permanent residents. T two heads are better than none. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure something out. We can do this. Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Yep, let's right. go. They push, uh, pushed in close to one another and began to search. All right. We got a freezer. We got meat. We got dry ice. Okay. Junpei picks up the dry ice with his sleeves as to avoid burning himself. Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide, right? I hope so. Yeah, it, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to turn back into gas again. We'll find out. Hell if I know. How is that going to help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. True. They were about to move on when June spoke up. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. How does she know this? Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Okay. Junpei looked at her dumbfounded. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I am the clean... Oh, <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. Good to know. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Oh no. Yeah, that's fight. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> June giggled and did her best to hide her guilt. At least she was still feeling good enough to joke around, Jin. But they're perfect for each other. They're both like fucking with other people. It's great. Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? No, it's sarcastic. I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Santa was now shivering at an astounding rate, but his curiosity seemed unaffected. Junpei, he wants it out of the freezer now. It, di it did seem rather yeah, odd. It is kind of weird. June answered. Uh, but it can turn into a liquid. It can? Uh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. Wait, so like, do you just like put it in an exam and give it stress and then it's under enough pressure? Yeah? Mm -hmm. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure. Yeah. It won't turn into a liquid, right? But are we at one atmosphere? Uh, that's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. Okay. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. Yeah. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? Because carbon dioxide wanted to be different. Get off its case, Santa. June replied with an answer that stunned both of them. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. Oh, is she talking about the goddamn ice from the desert from the mummy story? Hmm? The nether melting ice. How did that- That really came full circle from last episode, didn't it? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Okay. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? If it's possible, that's pretty cool. You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Damn. Yeah, well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Water that freezes at 96 degrees? Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Is this 96 degrees as in, like, European degrees or American degrees? Because that would be a bit of a change. Junpei was cold as hell, but this was too interesting to ignore. <laughs> he did his best to warm up by rubbing his arms and stamping his feet, then put the question to June. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Okay. Ice 9? Originally, Ice-9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. Okay. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. And that's pretty cool. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Well, I guess it's Ice-9. That's its name. Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So depending on where it is above or underneath 96 degrees, it's either ice nine or water. So you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Okay. Here, 
Think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? Yeah. But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this ice nine are like that? Yeah. Yep. She wasn't finished. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? No. For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it. They did all sorts of things to it, but whatever they did, it never crystallized. Until when? However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Well, that's an interesting story. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. Okay. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. And did they use that? However, something very strange happened. Let me guess, the seed crystal vanished or something? Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. So at one point, glycerin just decided, fuck it, I'm gonna crystallize. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Like the morphogenetic field theory? Like how, you know, when someone knows the answer to something, then more people in the world should theoretically know the answer? Interesting. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. The morphogenetic field. And now it's happening everywhere. The morphogenetic field. <laughs> Junpei was honestly impressed. Yeah, it was in fact a pretty interesting story. Wow, that's that's pretty interesting. But uh, what does that have to do with Ice Nine? Yeah, to his surprise, it was Santa and not June who answered. What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened, I mean. Ah. A lot like? Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees. Then everything would go horribly wrong. Man, it'd be the end of the world. Yep. Junpei felt that Santa might not be treating the idea of the end of the world with the proper concern. At any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. Yeah, I'm gonna say, they probably would have frozen him to death by now. He was right. Junpei shivered. Alright guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. So seriously, I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. Hmm. <laughs> I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Let's go. Santa stomped off, clearly doing his best to pretend the cold wasn't affecting him. Selfish, isn't he? Still, Santa was right, and it was high time they got back to their search. Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. Exactly. Junpei looked at June, nodded, and resumed his search of the room. Alright, what else do we have to look at? We've got... This thing's frozen solid. This pork? Yeah, seems like it. What's this thing? It looks like it's a tag or something. A chunk of pork and there's something inside of it, okay. Everything's frozen in here. It doesn't look like there's anything else interesting. There's a door. What's this? Sturdy rope. Do we want to combine this with this? Nope, can't combine. I don't know what we need the rope for. There's so much stuff in here. Why don't we take some of it out, Jumpy? A storage area built into the floor like a small cellar. Or oh, a couple of bottles. There are a couple of bottles in here. Okay. A water bottle. Okay. A water bottle. Uh, nothing that looks useful. Uh, not really much else we can really click on. I guess we should go to the door. Let's take a look at the pipe. There's water dripping from this pipe. Hmm. It looks like when the pipe bursts, the water hit the doorknob and froze it in its place. This water actually seems almost warm. Okay. Let's try clicking... No good. I can't hit it hard enough to break it. Maybe it just needs more of a shock, you know? More of a shock. Maybe like an explosion of some kind? Just something that can rupture it a little bit. Is there anything here that we can combine? Like this and this? No. Uh, maybe this and this? No. Uh, I'm not sure. 
Okay, let's get the rope out. Maybe try clicking this with the rope. There's warm water flowing from the pipe. There's a, uh, ice surrounding the doorknob. Hey, Junpei, didn't you find some dry ice earlier? Yeah. There's warm water coming out of that pipe. Warm water and dry ice? What do you think would happen if we put that stuff in a sealed container to- <gasps> Oh, okay. Okay, so let's get the water bottle first. Use that. There's warm water flowing from the pipe. Why don't we collect- Okay, put the dry ice in first. You've got to figure out a way to break the dry ice. Okay. Do we want to use... Combine you with the dry ice? No. Okay. The shelves are covered with frozen food. Nothing special about that. How do we break the dry ice? That's the question. Okay. Dry ice. Can't you make that stuff cause an explosion if you seal it in something that's airtight? Explode. Yeah, didn't you do that in school? You should never underestimate the power of expanding gas. Okay. Jumpy, is there a slip of paper in that meat? I think there's something written on here, but I can't read it like this. If we try and pull it out, it'll probably rip. You need to defrost that. Don't you think we're going to be doing that in this room? Uh, a, a water bottle. Yes, it is. <laughs> and the rope. It's a rope. Well, we could use it to attach something to something else, I suppose. Am I missing something? I feel like I'm missing something. Frozen chicken. Oh, we're probably gonna have to use this on the, the dry ice. Yep. All right, the dry ice is all in pieces now. Okay, so then we can combine that with the bottle. I'm gonna put these dry ice in the bottle. Okay. Water bottle with dry ice in it. Do we want to attach it to the rope as well? And let's just tie a rope on here. Water bottle bomb. We've just made a bomb. We've made a bloody bomb. There's warm water flowing from the pipe. Warm water drip from the ruptured pipe near the door. Put water into the bottle with dry ice. Here we go. And make sure the lid's closed. Yeah. Now I just have to put this makeshift bomb on the doorknob. Oh my god. We're gonna blow right. the place up. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The uh -oh. bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock? Huh. A small rock. We gotta have something. Junpei looked down at the floor. Scattered across it were pieces of dry ice left over from the large chunk he crushed earlier. All right, this ought to do the trick. He pulled his sleeve down over his hand to keep from getting burned and grabbed the chunk of dry ice. Ah, some dry ice, huh? Not a bad idea. How big's the explosion gonna be? I, I need to know this. It was a pretty good size. About as big as a pool ball. All right, guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Oh. Both Santa and June looked at him with new concern. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? I don't know. There isn't really anywhere big enough. Uh, well, there's the the hatch. Yeah, there is. Look, right here. We can hide in there. Junpei pulled open the door to the small cellar. Come on, get inside, quick. Let's go. Santa and June nodded and jumped down into the hole. Junpei quickly followed. In his hand, he could feel the chill of the frozen carbon dioxide even through his sleeve. He tightened his grip, took aim, and prepared to throw. All right, here I go. Three, four, five. You're what? counting the wrong way. Oh, oops. <laughs> How? That is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. <laughs> Sorry, dude. All right, for real this time. You guys ready? Here yes, we go. whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. All right, here I go. Three, All right. Two, Two, one. one. Junpei threw the chunk of dry ice as hard as he could. With the same motion, he ducked down into the cellar with Santa and June just as... Well, that was an explosion. Look at that. That was fun. Junpei leapt up out of the cellar and ran to the door. Oh, that's Jumpy, openable now. The ice on the door! Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone! The oh, blast thank must God. have shattered it. Yes! All right, let's see if it opens. Junpei grabbed the knob and pushed with all his might. Yes! The door gave way easily and all three of them tumbled out of the freezer at once. Hooray! We're out! June, relieved, collapsed onto the floor. Move! Oh, wow. Santa shoved past Junpei and ran straight to the grill, which he immediately grabbed. Oh, God damn it! Hot, 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 hot. Fuck! Good choice. He proceeded to kick the grill in a futile but amusing fit of rage. Well, you did just grab the grill. What did you think would happen? Mm-hmm. Hey, where's Lotus? Where is she? 
It took Junpei only a moment to find her, as she was sitting on the counter, idly scratching her chest. Ooh, uh, welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. We could have died. With a great yawn, Lotus lowered herself off the counter. Junpei clenched his teeth and walked toward her. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh, yeah? But you didn't. So everything worked out alright, didn't it? Oh, bitch. Okay. <laughs> What the hell? Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. All right, you say what you want to say. Oh, don't give me that crap. Uh, I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. That's true, if I guess. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die too. See? Mm-hmm. Uh. I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. Hmm. But I couldn't find anything. So, all I could do was wait. I mean... What else did you want me to do? Call the cops? She makes a good point, but still. Eh. It was true that there wasn't much she could have done, but something about her tone. Junpei gritted his teeth. Fine. But there's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? Ooh. Wait, what? You think I closed the door on you? I mean, it could have been set to trap us in there, because it's pretty obvious that Zero set up the... The meat and the paper. Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. She wouldn't have locked us in there. Yeah, I guess so. It seemed that an accident was the only explanation for the door's closure. If she had really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. Yeah. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Not an attempted murderer. Yet. Junpei swallowed his anger and did his best to apologize. Well, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's alright. As long as you understand. Alright. Lotus looked away and twirled her hair between her fingertips. His vengeance against the grill complete, Santa swaggered back toward Junpei and Lotus. Hey, no more screwing around, you two. Alright. Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. Oh, aren't you a lovely, charming young man, Santa? How rude! I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. All right. Okay, so what have we got from that? We've got this, the chunk Ooh. of pork. Can we put it on the grill, actually? We could probably put it on the grill. Guess I'll put this meat on the grill. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to do if the paper burns? Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's gonna burn right away, right? We just gotta keep an eye on it and the paper will be fine. Well, they can argue all they want. I'm gonna keep an eye on this pork. Cool, looks like it's about time. I'm gonna try taking the paper out. Jumpy, be careful. Sweet of her to care, but I know what I'm- Ouch. See? I told you. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Hurry up and take the paper out. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So are we going to have to cut the meat? Yeah, it looks that way. Okay. This paper is stuck in here real good. If I'm gonna get it out, I need to cut the meat open. So we need something to cut the meat open. Do we have a knife? There's gotta be a knife somewhere. It's kind of far away. I can't really tell, but is that a ladle? I don't really think a ladle is gonna be very useful. Okay. Hey Santa, could you open that door, please? What the hell? There's no way I could open that thing. Guess you're getting to that age where your eyes start to go, huh? You better watch your mouth, boy, or someone won't live long enough to see that door opened. This has got the two of them on edge. We gotta get out of here and fast. Alright, where could a knife be? Maybe there's one in here? I don't know. There are uh, cans lining every shelf, wooden box in the second row, though. Oh, we never checked the wooden box. Aha! A rusty knife? I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. We have to clean it, then. The knife seemed important, Junpei thought, but it wasn't going to be much use the way it was. It's futile. Futile? Oh, God. You know, a waste. Useless. Pointless. Quite literally pointless. Oh. Um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason, really. Just wanted to make conversation. I was just thinking about futility. Oh, well, isn't that a lovely thing to be thinking about, Akane? Huh? She wasn't making much sense. Junpei tried rephrasing his question. Why were you thinking about futility? At last, she answered. Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. Oh, great. We're going back to the Titanic story. The Titanic? 
Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? No, because I am not a Titanic fanboy. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. I'm going to say no, I haven't. No, I, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, yeah. a novel was published. It was called Futility. Oh, lovely. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. Okay. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Oh, and that novel predicted the Titanic. Wow, that's really cool. I hope that's a real fact. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time, size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats. Okay, she's got to be messing with us. Even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. I don't believe that part. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. Damn. But this book was written... 14 years before the Titanic sank. Crap. Hmm. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There was more? There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. Okay. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. Why would you write two similar stories? <laughs> in one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. That guy has got no creativity because he's just done two shipwreck stories within six years of each other. That's gotta be boring for his readership. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Yeah. Right, I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But what if Stead had some sort of special powers? Like the morphogenetic field. To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? Oh, I know about automatic writing, actually. Automatic writing is when you write sort of about thinking, I think it is, or it's like... Yeah, I, th I think that's it. Like, you write without thinking about it, and that's why it's automatic. What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit, and then yeah. they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Basically, that's, yeah. Yes. What do you oh, mean? Man. Yes, that stuff's a load of bull. Well, I don't think Akane thinks it's a load of bull. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. I mean, they could have. It's not that difficult. It's a big event in the future. If someone came back from the future, well, you know. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? Someone from the future! That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. No. He was doing the possessing. Oh. Oh. Hmm. What are you smoking? I think I agree with Junpei there. William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. Oh. Oh, that's awkward. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Oh. Wow. He decided it was probably best to say nothing. What June was saying was insane and utterly absurd. If he tried to take what she was saying seriously, he'd go mad. Um, well, uh... <laughs> Junpei smiled uncomfortably. Well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Yeah, I agree. We kind of need to get out of this room. Huh? But... Her voice trailed off and she glanced at the floor, troubled. Come on, let's get back to it. Aw. Junpei tra uh, tapped June gently on the shoulder and awkwardly reached around her to pick up the knife from the box. Got a rusty knife. Let's search it. We're really in trouble. I know I'm just uh, repeating myself, but this is a futility moment. That blade is so rusty. Yeah, I know. We can't cut a damn thing with a knife like this. If we're going to cut anything, we probably have to sharpen the knife. Where are we going to sharpen the knife, though? That's the thing. We need to find some... Maybe the kettle? Silver pot here. No. Nope. Where can we sharpen a knife? Well, kept countertop. Doesn't seem to be anything useful on it, though. Uh, maybe on the grill? 
Two pots and a pan above the stove. We've got to cut the meat to get the paper. I should be able to use this knife to cut it. Not working. This knife is too dull. Well, that's probably because it's all rusty. If we had something you could sharpen the knife with. So we have to find something that can sharpen the... Oh. No, you can't. I already checked. It's sealed shut. I think that's where the coal goes. Oh, okay. So we can't get in there. I wonder what this drawer is. You see the metal grate on top of the grill? They make it like that so the fat and juices can drip off into the meat while it cooks. Okay. So we can't go in there. Maybe it's got something to do with opening this. So we probably need to solve this puzzle. Let me see how many numbers are actually on this. This is probably what you're supposed to use to enter the password. Maybe if we put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. Hey Junpei, why don't you try entering the numbers we found on the voucher earlier? The one that said appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F. So that would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No. A is 11, so B is 12, C 13, D 14, E 15, F 16. So 9, 10, 11, 16. 9, 10, 11, 16. 9, 10, 11, 16. Ah, oh, too many numbers. Looks like the number on the voucher isn't the actual passcode. Uh, maybe just 1116? Why can't I open them? Uh, enter it. Okay, I guess I've got to figure something else out then. Uh, maybe it's to do with these plates over here. Because there are plates on the, the counter here. Uh, there are plates everywhere. Okay, it's not that. There are 10 soup plates. 10 is A in hexadash. Okay, let's take a look at the voucher again. I would imagine the food is served here for customers. Something doesn't seem quite right here. Why are there so many plates? A is 10. Yep, yeah, we've got the hexadecimal there. There are 15 of these seafood plates. It says F on the voucher. There are 16 meat plates. 16 is written in 10 in hexadecimal. That is nuts. Hmm. What could this, the solution be then? Looks like the number on the voucher isn't the actual passcode. We know. There's got to be something to do. What can we use to sharpen this knife? That's what I need to know. It's only a partition. There's nothing else worth noting here. Okay, I'm kind of lost at the moment. I'm not too sure what we can use to really... Well, okay, countertops doesn't seem to be anything useful. Is there anything in the freezer? Do you... What do you think you're going? Oh, I was just thinking I'd check and see if we missed anything in the freezer. Why would we have missed anything? We searched that whole damn place. We put our lives on the line, man. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. I don't need to go back there. Okay. Well, let's see if we can... Uh, yeah, let's go on this side. Let's take a look in the bins again. Uh, nothing inside. Nothing inside. Aha, what's this? A sink. It's still got water in it. There's a couple of plates in here, but I don't think they're going to help us. Are you sure? Oh, a wet... A whetstone? Okay, well, we can use that with a knife. Maybe I'll use the whetstone to sharpen the knife. Alright, the blade of the knife is getting sharper by the second. I should be able to cut something pretty good with this. Alright, let's head back to the meat. Alright, now that I've sharpened the knife... Yes, I cut the pork. Awesome, Junpei. Now we can cut out the paper and maybe get some food as well. C plus 10 plus F. Okay, so C would be 13. 13, 10, 16. 13, 10, 16. Okay, 13, 10, 16. 13, 10, 16. 13, do you not enter this number? Yep, yeah, 13, 10, 16. 13, 10, 16. 13, 10, 16. 13, 10, 16. Damn it. 13, 10, 16. Oh. Oh, 13 plus 10 is 23. Plus 16. 23 plus 16 would be 33, which would be 39. I don't know. Huh. Huh? This is weird. Hey, you're just punching in random numbers, aren't you? Maybe if you just enter it like it said in the hint. Ah, uh, shut up. Just shut up. Let's take a look. C plus 10 plus F. Yeah. Let me take a look at the hint again in the menu. Do you think it's some kind of code? Damn it, they're just screwing around. Junpei, do you know what C and F stands for? You think maybe it means corporate fun? <laughs> no, it's hexadecimal. I know, C... Okay, so 10... So A is 11... So that's 13 plus 10 plus 16. That's what it is. 13, 10 plus 16. 13 plus 13. So if I want to enter the answer, I press E. And if I screw up and need to start over, I press C. Yeah, it's 13 
plus 10, which is 23, plus 16, 23, 33, 39. It should be 39. 0, 3, 9. God damn it. Why is this wrong? This is the display. Okay, let's take a look at the plates again, because I feel like it's got something to do with the plates as well. Okay. A is 10, B is... Oh, C is 12. Okay. Okay, so C is 12, F is 15. Okay, I'm making a mistake. I made that make Okay, so if C is 12, then that's 22. 22 plus 15 is 37. So 37, maybe? Okay. Come on. 0, 3, 7? Come on. I'm doing it right. Remember the paper we found in the pork said C plus 10 plus F. There aren't any letters on the input device, though. What does that mean? Yeah, C is 12. 12 plus 10, 22. Plus F, which is 15, would be 22, 32 would be 37. If we convert it to base 10, yeah, 37. But it doesn't take 37 as an answer. I don't know. I... 37. 237. I'm not sure. 37, 0? Maybe we have to add it onto the voucher? I don't... I'm not sure. There are nine plates for appetizers. Nine is nine. Okay, how many plates? Ah! Why is this not work? I don't understand. C plus 10 plus F. And if we look back here, uh, C, 12, F, 50. Wait. Um, one second, one second. Um, 10 soup plates. 10 is A. 15 seafood, that's F. Uh, 16 meat, 16 is 10. 9 appetizers, 9. Ah, oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, I don't know. Um, what if I change the 10 to hexadecimal as well? Because I think that's possible, right? Wasn't it like, if, if C is 12, hmm, 10 in hexadecimal would be 6 added. Would 10 in, 10 in hexadecimal would be 16, so maybe, maybe I need to add 16 and not 10? I'm not sure. Um, okay, so C was 12. I know that, and I know that F is 15, so that's 27. Um, added plus 10 is 37. Uh... So, let's try 37. Nope. So that's not right. So, do I want to put the 10 into hexadecimal? Because that'd be 16, so that'd be 43. Is that right? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh my god. I'm so dumb. Well, I guess that went well. Fuck you, game. Oh god. Yeah, the door opened. Good job, Jumpy. Is that the key card? I think that's the key card. Saturn key card. Oh man, look at that. Didn't we see a Saturn sign earlier? Okay. And we can leave. Yes! Yes, I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumpy. Let's get out of here. All right, and we're out. Yes, let's go. And with that, we have escaped. We found it. That last bit. Oh my God, I'm dumb. <laughs> I think... We've been here before. Of course we have. We saw it from the grate on the other side. Sadly, however, guys, that is going to be the end of this episode of 999. In the next episode, I'm pretty sure we're going to go for a lot of story because, you know, we just had two escape rooms one after the other. So, in the next episode, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if we can find the rest of the group, and we're going to have a bit of fun. So, see you guys next time. Goodbye.